Hey everybody, in this video we're going to allow our player to pick up a, what we're going to call a pickup. We're going to create that in Blender, we're going to texture paint it so it has a little bit of color. We're going to bring that into Unreal and then we're going to allow our player to pick that up using a keyboard, uh, something like an E key to interact with our world when we get close enough to that object and then we're going to add that object's ability, let's say a health in this case, to the player's health overall and that number will go up and we'll and we'll also display that in and on the screen so let's get started i'm going to go over here to blender and i'm going to use my cube as just a little medical kit here so if i go into tab uh, hit tab to go into edit mode and i scale by hitting s and z to scale it down along this axis here and I'm going to make this kind of small. I want this medical box to be probably about uh, maybe 20 or 30 centimeters. So to do that specifically, I'm going to hit the N key to open up the side menu. And let's see, we have, I'm going to hit A to unselect everything. Uh, I'm going to turn on X-ray, select all this again. All right, so we can see that our Y is now just one. And we don't want that because if it's going to be about 30, let's say 30 centimeters is fine. Maybe a little bit bigger, um, let's say 50 centimeters total. Well, that's going to mean 25 centimeters on either side. So we're just going to switch this from uh, 1 meter, 100 centimeters, to 25. So 0.25. That'll move that one there. And then A, B for box select. And then I'm just going to set this to negative, make sure it's negative, 25. And then likewise, do the same for these, um, except for this is on the x-axis. So this is going to be negative 0.25 and A, B, x-axis, 0.25. And now it's a little bit too tall. Select everything, S, Z, and just put that down to about a box there. All right, so let's zoom in a little bit here. I'm going to go up to our layout to start doing our UV unwrap. And so once we have, once since we're already in edit mode and all of our vertices are selected, we we can begin to unwrap this. Let's hit U for unwrap and Smart UV Project. And this looks pretty good. So this is probably going to be the top here, the bottom, or vice versa. And then these are going to be the sides. All right, so normally we could apply, this would be all we would need to do. We can bring this into Unreal, but we want to actually put some paint on here to just show that it's a medical item. And that way we don't have to try to do that elsewhere. Uh, this is probably the easiest way to do it. So I'm going to go from edit mode to texture paint mode down here on the bottom in the, our 3D view. And it's going to give us this white box and that's okay for right now. In this view, I'm going to create new because I want to create a new image for our UV map. And I'm going to call this medical underscore col for color map or color texture. 1024 by 1024 is probably a little bit too large for our detail. So I'm just going to bump this down to 512. Uh, we can have alpha, it doesn't matter. It's just going to have an extra channel to uh, give us the ability to kind of show through if we need to. And that's fine. Okay, so hit okay. It's gonna create this blank one. And then I wanna start painting on here, but if you notice that this is white, it's not allowing us to paint because we have to add a paint slot to here. And it's gonna ask us what type of paint slot, whether it's a normal map, a diffuse map, specular, or whatever, I'm gonna choose diffuse. It's gonna ask me what paint slot I want to name it. Um, I'm just going to name it the same thing. So medical underscore col and 1024. Um, I'm just going to make that the same size. All right. So now we have this in here. And as I start to paint on here, um, I'm just going to add, well, actually, before I do that, let's edit undo. I'm going to go ahead and fill. So here are our brushes. I'm going to fill this in with, let's say, a, um, it's a tan. If we darken it, it'll become kind of a brown. And then click on this, and this will make it um, indeed that color. 
Now let's make sure that these match up. So I accidentally created two um, uh, slots here. I should have used this one, but we're gonna go ahead and use this one so that you can see what it's doing. All right, so now that I fill that in, this gets, uh, well, I guess I didn't need to fill this in, but now that this is colored with this fill color, I'm gonna switch brushes to my text draw and I am going to, uh, let's make this a, maybe a yellow color so it sticks out. And my brush is kind of big here, so let's bring the radius down a little bit to maybe about 14. Let's turn the strength up quite a bit. And I wanna just draw a plus on here. The easiest way is to hit seven on your number pad and just go into top view. And I am going to simply just drag my mouse straight down and maybe back up and just go back and forth really quickly so that I get a nice line here. There are easier ways to do this, but you get the idea. All right, so we got a line and that shows up here. It also kind of shows up a little bit there, um, but that's okay. And then from this side, just gonna drag my mouse back and forth. Maybe just turn that strength up all the way so that we get that nice blending. Okay, so you get the idea. We can go ahead and continue to paint this and uh, this image gets generated over here when we go and hit image, save image as. We're going to go to our uh, models, textures, and just dump it in here and get rid of that 001. Okay, so medical underscore color or COL. And uh, yes, it looks like I wrote right that and that's fine, perfect. Okay, so now that we have our UV, uh, our mesh UV mapped, and then we have the actual map for that UV texture, I am going to first go ahead and save our blend file just to make sure. I'm just going to call this medical box. All right, now we export it to Unreal Engine FBX. Set my presets to Unreal Engine, and I'm going to put in the FBX folder. It's gonna be called medical underscore box, export. And now let's switch over to a clean third person view, but it really doesn't matter what we're in in Blender or uh, excuse me, Unreal. All right, so what I want to happen is I want to import our medical box first and set that up. So this one, and I'm gonna bring in my FBX file first. Oops, so apparently I didn't F export, I gotta select this. So let's get out of texture mode. It's not selected, I guess if it's in texture mode, select that. The error that I got was that it didn't exist and I was trying to import an empty max mesh. And indeed, uh, medical box is way too small. So nothing got exported with that. Uh, let me do that one more time just to make sure my Unreal Engine settings are exported. Okay, so now I'm gonna try that one more time. Import. Yeah, if you ever get an error, this came up on the other screen. If you ever get an error that says cannot det detect import type, no mesh is found or animation track, it just basically means your FBX file didn't have a mesh in it, which is quite possible. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and import that again. Uh, actually, before that, I'm going to set up a new folder, just call it custom, so we can just put everything in there, keep it a little bit cleaner. Import, medical box, FBX. Um, I'm going to go ahead and generate the collision on that since it is a, a simple box. All right, so there's my material that I, I set up, but it's blank. It doesn't have anything in there, so I can just go ahead and delete that. Eh, actually, let's keep that around because it might be attached to that guy. And then finally, we're going to import the texture. So back up to my models and under textures, it should be the top one, medical color. Okay, so let's drag in a box just to set this up. That looks about right. That was about 50 centimeters. Kind of just guessed at that. I'm gonna hit the F key to zoom in on that. Now this is just a texture, but if I drag it onto my box, 
it'll go ahead and create the material for me. Say medical coal material created. It's probably a bad name for it, so I could just rename it if I if I need to. But it's nice that it just created that for me. Okay, it's going to do a whole bunch of stuff. And you can see that the texture is applied. It's pretty flat, but you get the idea. And so once that's set up, let's uh, go ahead and in our, uh, in our folder here, I'm going to right click and I'm going to set up the static mesh, which basically doesn't do anything but look pretty on our, on our floor here. I'm going to add it to a blueprint. I'm going to create an empty blueprint. It's going to be an actor. And I'm just going to call this health pickup underscore BP. Okay. And now this is going to be empty, of course, but we're going to go ahead and open it up. Drag this window in. And from here, uh, let me move my window so you can see. I'm going to drag my mesh. Uh, I could drag it in there. And now it sets it up as a... Um, a static mesh component under our health pickup blueprint. And that's going to be great. But then we also want a collider on top of this that is going to allow us to only be able to pick it up if we're close enough. So under my root scene uh, component there, I'm just going to type in box and get a box collision here. And uh, box is just fine. We can call it box collision just to be explicit about it. And this box collider is a little bit too big so I'm going to hit the R key to scale it down and then hover my mouse over this middle and let's see snapping uh, actually I'm just gonna I'm just gonna go ahead and scale it this way because we do actually want to scale it along this axis the uh, the uh, X and the Y, just again, we don't need, necessarily need to be on top of the box to collect it, but maybe we're standing over here with our feet and that'll be enough to collect the box. Again, you don't need to stand on the box to collect it. Let's make it maybe just a little bit bigger. I'm gonna go ahead and compile that. And um, let's see, the next thing, oh, I didn't go ahead and save this. Let me switch back to this editor and make that material my medical material okay there we go and then i'm going to save that that's my static uh so now that this shows up as um with a with a texture material on it okay so this looks pretty good so far now we need to enable the interaction or at least get the start getting the event when the player hits the e key in our case for interaction so i'm going to save this before i close it and the way that we do that we want to add E to the list of events that get listened to. So we go to Edit, Project Settings, and once this pops up, we're going to go down to Input. And this is going to be where we have all of our action mappings. So if you uh, twirl this disclosure arrow, you can see that we have Jump built in and then Reset VR. We're going to add our own. So go up to this little plus button next to Action Mappings hit plus, and it's just simply going to add a new one. Now this is the name that we want to give it. We can give it any descriptive name that makes sense to us. And for this one, I'm going to say interact with world. And then for the key that we want that to call, so the event is called, or the mapping is called interact with world. The key that we want, if we disclose this arrow here, we have all the keys on the keyboard, more or less. You know, let's just find the E key. And we can add modifiers to that. So if we want to do something for Shift E or Control E or Alt E or Command E, uh, we can check these boxes to allow modifiers to those keys. Likewise, if we want to add other ways of calling this interact with world, especially if we're on a mobile device, we can have different touch events. Uh, if we have a gamepad or we're on a different platform entirely, we can also have any of these combination of keys also call the interact with world. So it's nice just to set that up or I can go ahead and hit this X over here to remove it. So if I hit this X along this row, it removes that additional mapping that I had for interact with world. All right, so I'm gonna copy this out of here. So interact with world, I'm just gonna copy that string because. Um, it's just going to help me with my search when I go to add this to my blueprint. Okay, so that's not the blueprint. 
and this is really important, if I if I have this selected and you look in your uh, outliner here, it does show that it's a static mesh actor. And so if we ever try to interact with this, it won't work. Uh, that might seem obvious, but well, we made that mistake before. Uh, so let's go ahead and not make that mistake again and then drag in, uh, again, not the static, uh, but the actual blueprint, and I should probably put those into a different folder just to keep those out of the way. Okay, so create a new folder, and I'm just gonna I'm gonna drag everything that's related to the mesh, including that material in there. Click move to. It's gonna update all the references when I move that. I'm gonna create a new folder for our. I'm just gonna call it BP for time's sake, drag that in, move it there. All right, now that way we won't make any mistakes as we're dragging these things in. All right, so now you can see the collider box. We can click on our guy here, and if he's in there where his capsule collider is interacting or is overlapping that box, that's gonna be close enough for us to collect this, uh, this pickup. And maybe I do wanna make that a little bit bigger, so open up our blueprint, select our box collider, hit R, um, I'm going to zoom in here, select this uh, arrow and just move it maybe two units up, compile, save. Now this updates and sure enough, this clearly overlaps my foot. And even if we move back a little bit, I think that's good. I think that's um, uh, perfectly close enough to start collecting these items. Okay, so we go back to our blueprint once more now that we have our mesh and our collider set up, we can then go to our event graph and start receiving input from the keyboard when uh, when this unit when the player is standing over our our box. And so what I'm going to do is just paste in that string that we have, and again that will allow me to search for this a little bit quicker and just uh, add this action events. So the action event gets called from my keyboard. And we have two pins here, two exec pins. One is pressed and one is released. So when I physically press the button down, this pin will get called and then when I release it, this one gets called. All right, so when it gets pressed, I wanna know about that. So let's just print out a debug statement that says, uh, interact with world was pressed. Okay, and then I'm gonna go up here and then Oh, let's see, copy and then paste this down. Or likewise, we can actually uh, click Control W. Let me do that again for you and make, make this a little bit bigger, make this a little bit smaller. So to copy these nodes, if you select this node, you don't have to copy and paste, though you could. You can go down here, wherever your mouse is, Control W will be a shortcut to paste that in. And instead of interact with world was pressed, I'm going to say interact with world was released. All right, and then of course we have to hook that up to our exec pin. And uh, let's go ahead and run this. This is not gonna work currently, but just to show you, we always wanna make sure. So I'm gonna go ahead and step over the box, be clearly on it, hit the E key, no output. Let's go back to our blueprint. And that's because we're not setting up input on our, um, on our blueprint. So our blueprint's not listening for events to get to this event to be called and thus it's never going to get notified because we're not registering uh, as a listener for this particular event. So let's go ahead and register as a listener. We're gonna drag out from our begin play because this is when everything gets started. And I'm just gonna say enable input. Okay, so enable input set up. And I'm gonna say uh, enable input on myself, meaning the blueprint that we're currently in for a player controller. Well, we don't have the player controller yet. So let's go ahead and right click and just say, get player, put player controller. Okay, choose the top one there. Now that I have the get player controller node, I can pipe that into our player controller input on our enable input. And we always want to get in this case, the player index. If you have a multiplayer game, you might have multiple player controllers, of course. Okay, so save and compile. I'm gonna switch back to our player, hit play. So I'm clearly on top of it, and then I'm gonna hit E. And sure enough, it called both because I just tapped E. If I hold down E, interact with world was pressed, and then when I release E, 
Interactive's world was released. All right, so now that we have everything working, we can go ahead and continue building out our blueprint. Okay, so what we first want to do is we want to make sure that this, this pickup is going to add to our health. Well, how much is it going to add to our health? We can add a variable inside of our medical blueprint to determine that number. So we're going to create a variable to hold that number. So over here on the left, we're going to click add variable and we're just going to call this um, health um, points. You can name it whatever you want, of course. And then over here, we're going to change it from a Boolean, which is just the default to uh, you can choose an int or a float. Um, health is usually just an integer, so we'll just change it there, usually zero from 100. And we can change any of these values, but the most important one is this default value, and we gotta compile it first to have that show up. And I'm gonna say that this particular health uh, pickup by default is going to be 25. So if we just threw a bunch on the, on the level, each one would be 25 by default. And of course, if you drop, drop it in on the world, you can change this value later by exposing it, if you guys remember, uh, clicking on that I will expose it. I gotta compile to, uh, to show that. So now that when I click on here, you can see health points, 25. And um, you know if we dragged, if I alt drag to copy this out, I can change this one to, I don't know, 33 would be a, an interesting number. And so I click on this one. So now you can see how as a level designer, I can go in and drop these in with different values. All right, so nothing, we haven't really changed anything. We just added values to these instances. And now we're going to want to notify and add to the player's health. So again, when we come in here and hit E, we're getting that notification. And the first thing that we're going to do is after we're gonna, uh, maybe I'll get rid of this uh, here. I'll keep the print statement just in case I break something or, or one of these little uh, pipes get broken and, and everything stops working, I'll know. So I'm gonna pull this pipe off, this exec pin, and what we're going to do is just say destroy. So when we pick up our box, we, we want to destroy it so we can't pick it up again and again and again. And we're gonna say target self, we're gonna destroy ourself. And again, we're in the uh, medical pickup or the health pickup blueprint. So now when I go over here, let's walk over here, hit E. Oh, that one got destroyed. And then this one got destroyed. That sometimes happens when you have um, when you're over top of, uh, different items. So I hit E and actually I didn't need to be, I didn't actually need to be on top of this collider, which is great for, you know, when we test it, we find that out very quickly that this one actually got, uh, picked up first and I was nowhere near it. So let's go ahead and change our blueprint to fix that little bug. And the way that we're going to do that is we're not going to enable input on the pickup until our player has overlapped on the box collider. So we're gonna go ahead and disconnect this. I'm gonna click on this pin, alt click to disconnect that pin. And I'm just gonna move it somewhere down here and over here. So on our box collider, we're gonna drag this in from, actually let's do it from the components thing, drag this in here as a get. And, uh, oh, I'm sorry, um, doing the wrong thing. Uh, click on that first, and then we're going to drag it for over here on uh, on component N, uh, begin overlap, and we're also want to, wanting to do the same thing on component end so that we can turn off and on. Let's move these up a little bit. We can turn this off and on as we go. So when I overlap it, I want to start listening for that event, and then when I uh, come out of it, I want to turn off that, that listener. So we want to disable input. Okay, so get the disable input pin, pipe that into the on component end overlap. So hopefully when we are not in, uh, we actually removed any instance from any, any code from the event begin play. So if we stand over the box or if we hit E, nothing will happen. When we stand over the box, we enable input. It's already connected to our get player controller. And we're gonna use that same instance of get player controller to disable the input 
on and input. So let's test this out really quickly. Compile, save, I should save first. Okay, so I'm clearly standing over this box. I'm gonna hit play, I'm gonna hit the E key. Nothing happens because I need to leave first, come back in and then hit the E key. And if I hit the E key again, nothing happens. So what was happening is I was never getting notified of the blueprint when I was standing on top of it. So either we're just going to have to accept that or not start our player right on top of the box so that this gets called if and only if we come into the box, not when we're already starting the level in the box. So I'm gonna go with the former and just select this guy and move him out. We could handle the, the instance, but then it gets a little bit too complicated. You know, and save. Okay, so that should work. Let me uh, go ahead and play that, test it. So stand over here, hit this, and then come over here, hit that. Perfect. Okie dokie. So now that that's set up and, and working fine, we can concentrate on the fact that once we, um, once we destroy ourselves, we want to then add our health points to our player. So we're going to get the value of what our health point is currently assigned to this blueprint. And then we're going to pipe this into our player to notify, hey, player, you now have this many new points. But we have no way of doing that right now. Uh, let me go ahead and compile this, save it. And we're going to go, I'm going to open this little button here that says show or hide the sources panel just to go and, and find other um, items in here. So in our, let's see, um, uh, we do not, let me look for, let's see, um, yeah, blueprints, oh, that's, oh, I created my custom folder in there, that's why I was confused. Okay, I'm going to drag that out to content and move folder here. Okay, so third person BP blueprints. All right, so under third person BP, which is the um, the template that I chose, we have the third person game mode and then the third person character blueprint. Uh, I'm going to I want to modify this, but instead of uh, building off of this one, what I can do is I want to actually create a child blueprint class of this, or you can just create uh, right click and go to blueprint class and then base it off of this game mode base. If you have multiple game modes, then you might want to inherit from it, but we're just going to start it from the base class, the, the startup one. Uh, so this one, I'm just going to call pickups game mode. Okay. So it's okay. We have two game modes. Again, if we have different uh, types of games in the same, uh, in the same actual game, then we would have this. Okay. Double click on this and it's going to give us a viewport, which we're not really interested in. And then our event graph. Our game mode is going to contain anything that relates to the entire game itself, be it a player's health or maybe any inventory items that you have, and you can create structs to organize that a little bit more efficiently. We're just going to dump it right at the, the root level of our component. So I'm going to add a variable and I'm just going to call it player health. Okay. And that's not a Boolean. That's going to be uh, also an integer. Okay. And then we can have like a, a value range and some other uh, instances, uh, constraints on that. All right, so once we have that, I want to create a function that we can call from outside of this class in order to increment or decrement this number. Okay, so create a function. And for this function, I'm gonna call it add, let's call it add to health. Okay, and we might have one that's, um, maybe reduce health, or we can repurpose the add to health uh, and just pass it a negative number. I'm just gonna call it reduce health for this one. And again, maybe these can share the same, um, um, the same logic, but they're in two different tabs. So I'm gonna actually close that one. We're just gonna concentrate on add to health uh, to make it the most uh, sense. Okay, so when we have the player health we want to be able to add a number. So we're gonna get that value because we wanna get the value, let's say it's starting off at 50. So let's actually change the default value to 50 while we're talking about it. So right here, make sure our player health is selected. Um, and also just compile it just in case that default value doesn't come up. And 
So we want to pass in a value to this function, but we don't have a way to do that yet. And so what we do is we add an input, and this is just like a parameter. So add new parameter, it's called inputs, but over here, this button's called new parameter. And the parameter that I want to add in is new health uh, value. Okay, and that's going to be of type integer. Okay, and so now we have a new pin that we can pull out from. Okay, so the new value, let's say it's 25, and the old value, let's say it's 50, we wanna add those together. So right click and just simply type in add, and there's a couple in here, so just to make sure we choose the right one. Uh, we don't wanna add any arrays, we just wanna add in, uh, actually an easier way to do that is if you do this and then type in add, uh, we can do here, and then for this value, here, or maybe we uh, swap those. Uh, command click to swap those. Doesn't matter, I'm just trying to keep it neat. Okay, so when our health function gets called, we're gonna add those two. Um, and then we have a return value of that. So that return value is going to be the new value of our player health. And so we're gonna pull this pin out and then, um, actually, let's uh, let's pull this out here. And we're going to use a set pin or a set um, a node here. And so this value is going to go into this value. Uh, this value, though, is, let's see. Oh, okay. So adds a key. Uh, this is not what I want. Sorry about that. It looks very similar, but not. Here we go, math integer plus integer, sorry about that. And new health value, this one to this one. And the uh, return value is a pin. I should have seen that right away. I'm trying to do too many things at once. And then we're gonna take this exact pin and pipe it into here. Okay, so let's clean this up a little bit. All right, so again, 25 plus uh, 50 is going to equal 75 for our new player health. And then we can return that if we want to. And let me just show you how to do that. Um, so with our add to health here, we don't have any outputs. We can add an output here. And this would just be like, maybe call it new health value in case anybody cares what the new value is. Oh, okay. Um, it already has new health. Um, hmm. Okay, well, we've already, let's just call it new health can think of a better name later. So after this set, we're gonna return this value as a return value, okay? If anybody's interested in it. Let's go ahead and save that, compile, and now we have our function. I think that makes sense to you guys, but again, inputs, if you're wondering how to add parameters to your functions, and then outputs are your return values. Okay, let's see. Uh, let's go ahead and close this game mode for now. Um, we don't have any way currently uh, for that health value to get pulled out uh, properly, but that's okay. Okay, so back in our health pickup blueprint, after we destroy the actor, um, and actually maybe even before we destroy the actor, because once the actor is destroyed, uh, so I'm gonna alt click to get rid of that. So after our printout statement, we're going to say, actually, this is not the way to do it. Uh, right click here, because we're gonna first need to get the game mode, so get game mode. Okay, there's a function here just called get game mode, and move this aside. And um, this return value, we're gonna need a function on this. So this is the equivalent of saying something like game mode dot, and then having the functions list pop up. So we have a function called add uh, add health. Uh, let's see. Oh, okay. So the reason why that didn't pop up is because this is a generic game mode. But if you remember, we inherited uh, from our game mode base. And so we have to use that specific instance or uh, excuse me, that specific class of game mode. So the way we do that is we cast it to uh, our particular game mode. And the one we created is pickups game mode. So now we have the ability once we have, uh, so we're going to call that first cast it, get the game mode, get the generic game mode, cast it into a game mode so that we can then call a function on the exec pin, which is add health 
And you can see with the f, that is our function. Okay, and so it's going to ask, uh, let's see, the uh, new, uh, new health value is this guy. Let's move that out a little bit here. And then finally, um, our return value, if we care about it, and let's say we do, let's print this out just to see what it is. Um, oh, it's gonna be an exec pin, sorry about that. So we need an exec pin for the print. Okay, and then we can pipe in our new health to our string, but you can see that these colors are different, but it will allow us to convert the integer to a string using an intermediary node, and that's fine. And then after all that's done, then we'll destroy the blueprint or the, yeah, the actor. Uh, one thing I want to do actually before printing out this string, it, it's just going to show up as 75. Uh, in this case, we don't change any values and I don't, that's not very helpful in terms of debugging. So let me pull up a text formatter or format text. And this one's kind of interesting because we're going to take that this pin here, alt click to deselect that, pull it into the format. Uh, actually, I'm sorry, uh, alt click on that one. Uh, we're gonna select the uh, inside of our format, we have a pin and I'm gonna say new health is, and then I'm gonna print out that value. The way that we have values in our string is we enc uh, encase it in curly braces and you can call it whatever you want. I'm gonna just call it new health value. And then once you hit enter on that, it creates an input pin for that. Uh, let me get rid of this intermediary. I don't know why I created that. And, oh, okay, actually, let me un... Yeah, so this intermediary was a, um, converts a string to text. Okay, so just um, make sure that you do the correct from integer to string, to text. There are subtle differences, but the text formatter needs text, not a string. Uh, this is just hard coded in there. And then let's move this over just a hair. The result from that is going to go into the printf. And again, it's gonna convert it from a text object to a string object, okay? So a little bit confusing, but that's just what needs to happen for that text formatter. I'm gonna compile this and we do have an error here and says the blueprint self is not uh, pick up game mode. Oh, okay, so uh, we don't have the game mode. Let's pipe in the game mode. Game mode base, ref oh, I'm sorry. Um, not the base game mode, but the base as a pickup base mode. Okay, sorry. Um, just make sure you're hooking up the pickups game mode to the health. So this is the equivalent of doing pickups game mode dot. You can't just do game mode base dot because on this function because it doesn't work. Um, yeah, so anyway, just make sure everything is lined up and I save that, compile, and now everything should be working. So that when I go ahead and step over my box and I hit the E key, it'll print out this generic print statement. It'll then talk to my uh, game mode and say, hey, game mode, I have 25 points to add to the player's health. And then it'll say new player's health is that value, print that value out to the screen and then destroy the actor. Okay, so uh, if my hypothesis is correct, the first, the, uh, the first box we collect, if our player um, game mode, let's just make sure our default. So player health by default is at 50. So this one is 25, so that should add set to 75. And then this one is 33. So that one will be, um, what, 108? Let's go ahead and play it and see if I'm right. So step over this one, hit the E key, and let's see. And that didn't seem to work, okay? So none of our interactions was, um, it was actually indicated, which is great that we have those blueprint print statements in there still. Uh, I'm gonna go back to our custom BP meshes and see what happened. All right, so when we uh, interact, we go over the box, we should be able to input that. Oh, okay. So another thing I forgot, 
is we set up a new game mode and all we did was just create a game mode. We didn't tell the project that that's the game mode that we wanted to add. I should have done that when I went to project settings. So edit project settings. And when I was editing the input, I should have also showed you maps and modes. Okay, so maps and, nope, not movies, maps and modes, the one above it. Okay, that's weird. All right, so the one that it's still currently using is that third uh, that third game mode. So we're going to drop that down and then choose our pickups game mode. Okay, so now it knows to use this one. And um, let's see. Yep, everything should work. Let me just recompile and save just in case. And then hit the play button. All right, so hitting E, nothing happens. Hit E. So that was picked up. My new health is 75. And then if I walk over here, hit the E button. Now it's at 108. And that's how we add a pickup if and only if the player is standing over the collider. How to add that to the player controller so that now uh, if we wanted any damage in our game mode, we can have an end state in our... Um, if uh, Let's actually go back to our... Um, actually, no, this one. Pick up this game mode. So when I add to health, or maybe in the re reduce health function, in the reduce health function, we can have an if statement that says, if the uh, if the health, if the player's health, um, get the player's health is uh, less than or equal to, uh, not this one, less than. less than or equal to, and we want an integer here, so less than or equal to zero. If that's true, so if that's true, we would say, you know, print this out, just say end game. False, if it's not false when we reduce the health, eh, maybe we show red on the screen, maybe we shake the screen a little bit or something like that. So that's how you would go about starting to end the game. We can go ahead and save that and compile it. All right, so we're adding health here. Of course, if you uh, walk over a spot or something reduces your health, we would need to handle that case. But hopefully that gives you the basics of how to do pickups. All right, guys, thanks. And hopefully this was useful to you. And let me know what else you guys want to see from me.